about 50 years ago, there was a great excitement among the Sioux Indians. They had received warning that the Ojibwe, their inveterate enemies, were preparing a strong war party to wipe them out a village at a time. This was why Whooping Crane, their best scout, and two other trusted men were sent as spies into the Ojibwe country to learn the hostile plan. They traveled secretly to the headwaters of the Mississippi, as far as the lake on which was the principal Ojibwe village. Hit the canoe inland, then arranged that each should go scouting alone, return the next night, and signal by a familiar woodland code. Whooping Crane had great success and learned all he needed. So at midnight, he came cautiously back to the place of meeting. For a time, he listened for signals. Then, getting none, he began with the first they had arranged. He gave the long call of the hoot owl. After a brief wait, he got a reply. Exactly the same as he had given it. It might have been an owl responding. It certainly was not one of his friends, for that was not the right answer. So he silently glided off in the woods to wait. After an hour, he ventured back to the neighborhood of the canoe, and upon a slightly rising ground halted, and gave the squall of the sheep fox. In a little while, the response came. Just the same. It was not the reply he had hoped for. It might be a sheep fox answering back to a sheep fox. He doubted that very much. Then it was probably an enemy. And he judged it wiser to hasten away. All that night and the next day he hid in a hollow log. Then when midnight was near, he stole up through the neighborhood of the hidden canoe and listened long for a signal. Not hearing any, he gave one they had agreed on, the growling bark of the dog fox. Very soon he heard a reply. The very same, a dog fox answering to a dog fox? No, no, very unlikely. And in any case, it was not the answer arranged with his friend. So he withdrew as silently and quickly as he could. At first, he was minded to give it up for that night. But on towards dawn, he came and made one more attempt. He thought, as he listened, that he caught the faint far moan of the timberwood. So presently, groping his way to the shore of the lake, he gave the rolling call the loon gives when the day is breaking. And a voice replied with the same call. Now he was sure that it was all done by the enemy. They were aware that he was in the country and were trying to decoy him. So he fled silently and far off, nor rested till he was miles away from the ambush. All day he kept his and thought, Alas, my two brave boys have surely met their fate. Now I must return alone to Dakota with the bad news. Then he said, No, that is not what we agreed on. He said we were trying to meet for three times before giving it up. So the next night, at the darkest hour, he came crawling, cat like toward the appointed place, crawling like a man that is going into the very jaws of death. For he knew now for certain that the Ojibwe were lying in wait for him, and that probably both his friends were killed. Each time he raised his foot and set it down, he wriggled his toes to tear the spot of dry twigs that might snap. Every branch that barred his way he crawled under or around. 
Not a sound he made, though Lynx could have gone more softly. He was still far from the canoe and listening keenly when he heard the soft howl of the timber wolf. Thank you. 